Myanmar, Wikipedia article audio. Myanmar, officially the Republic of the Union of Myanmar and formerly known as Burma, is a sovereign state in Southeast Asia. Myanmar is bordered by India and Bangladesh to its west, Thailand, and Laos to its east and People's Republic of China to its north and northeast. To its south, about one-third of Myanmar's total perimeter of 5,876 km forms an uninterrupted coastline of 1,930 km along the Bay of Bengal and the Andaman Sea. The country's 2014 census counted the population to be 51 million people. As of 2017, the population is about 54 million. Myanmar is 676,578 square kilometers in size. Its capital city is Napiada, and its largest city and former capital is Yangon. Myanmar has been a member of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations since 1997. Etymology History Prehistory Early city-states Imperial Burma Tonguan colonialism British Burma Burma in British India Separation of British Burma from British India Independence Military rule Civil wars Democratic reforms 2015 general elections Geography Administrative divisions Climate Environment Wildlife Government and politics Political culture Foreign relations Military Human rights and internal conflicts Child soldiers Child-slash-forced-slash-slave labor, systematic sexual violence and human trafficking Early civilizations in Myanmar included the tibeto burman speaking Paihu city-states in Upper Burma and the Munde kingdoms in Lower Burma. In the 9th century, the Bamar people entered the Upper Irrawaddy Valley and, following the establishment of the pagan kingdom in the 1050s, the Burmese language, culture, and Theravada Buddhism slowly became dominant in the country. The pagan kingdom fell due to the Mongol invasions and several warring states emerged. In the 16th century, reunified by the Tonga dynasty, the country was for a brief period the largest empire in the history of mainland Southeast Asia. The early 19th century Kanbong dynasty ruled over an area that included modern Myanmar and briefly controlled Manipur and Assam as well. The British took over the administration of Myanmar after three Anglo-Burmese wars in the 19th century and the country became a British colony. Myanmar was granted independence in 1948, as a democratic nation. Following a coup d'état in 1962, it became a military dictatorship. Genocide Allegations and Crimes Against Rohingya People Rohingya left by boat For most of its independent years, the country has been engrossed in rampant ethnic strife and its myriad ethnic groups have been involved in one of the world's longest-running ongoing civil wars. During this time, the United Nations and several other organizations have reported consistent and systematic human rights violations in the country. In 2011, the military junta was officially dissolved following a 2010 general election, and a nominally civilian government was installed. This, along with the release of Aung San Suukyi and political prisoners, has improved the country's human rights record and foreign relations, and has led to the easing of trade and other economic sanctions. 
There is, however, continuing criticism of the government's treatment of ethnic minorities, its response to the ethnic insurgency, and religious clashes. In the landmark 2015 election, Aung San Suukyi's party won a majority in both houses. However, the Burmese military remains a powerful force in politics. 2012 Rakhine State Riots Freedom of Speech Myanmar is a country rich in jade and gems, oil, natural gas, and other mineral resources. In 2013, its GDP stood at 56.7 billion US dollars and its GDP at 221.5 billion US dollars. The income gap in Myanmar is among the widest in the world, as a large proportion of the economy is controlled by supporters of the former military government. As of 2016, Myanmar ranks 145 out of 188 countries in human development, according to the Human Development Index. Both the names Myanmar and Burma derive from the eponym Brahmadesha after Brahma. Myanmar is the transliteration of Brahma, where B and M are interchangeable in the regional language. While Burma is the British colonial official's phonetic equivalent for the first half of Brahmadesha, the ancient name of the region. Brahma is part of the Hindu trinity, a deity with four heads. In 1989, the military government officially changed the English translations of many names dating back to Burma's colonial period or earlier, including that of the country itself, Burma became Myanmar. The renaming remains a contested issue. Many political and ethnic opposition groups and countries continue to use Burma because they do not recognize the legitimacy of the ruling military government or its authority to rename the country. In April 2016, soon after taking office, Aung San Suukyi clarified that foreigners are free to use either name because there is nothing in the constitution of our country that says that you must use any term in particular. The country's official full name is the Republic of the Union of Myanmar. Countries that do not officially recognize that name use the long-form Union of Burma instead. In English, the country is popularly known as either Burma or Myanmar slash MJNMR slash both these names are derived from the name of the majority Burmese Bamar ethnic group. Myanmar is considered to be the literary form of the name of the group, while Burma is derived from Bamar, the colloquial form of the group's name. Depending on the register used, the pronunciation would be Bama or Myama. The name Burma has been in use in English since the 18th century. Burma continues to be used in English by the governments of many countries, such as Canada and the United Kingdom. Official United States policy retains Burma as the country's name, although the State Department's website lists the country as Burma and Barack Obama has referred to the country by both names. The Czech Republic officially uses Myanmar although its Ministry of Foreign Affairs mentions both Myanmar and Burma on its website. The United Nations uses Myanmar, as do the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, Australia, Russia, Germany, China, India, Bangladesh, Norway, Japan, and Switzerland. Most English-speaking international news media refer to the country by the name Myanmar, including the BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, Reuters, RT, and the Australian Broadcasting Corporation slash Radio Australia. Myanmar is known with a name deriving from Burma as opposed to Myanmar in Spanish, Italian, Romanian, and Greek Burmania being the local version of Burma in the Spanish language, for example. 
Myanmar used to be known as Burmania in Portuguese, and as Burmanie in French. As in the past, French language media today consistently use Burmanie. Archaeological evidence shows that Homo erectus lived in the region now known as Myanmar as early as 750,000 years ago, with no more erectus finds after 75,000 years ago. The first evidence of Homo sapiens is dated to about 25,000 BP with discoveries of stone tools in central Myanmar. Evidence of Neolithic Age domestication of plants and animals and the use of polished stone tools dating to some time between 10,000 and 6,000 BC has been discovered in the form of cave paintings in Pitalin Caves. The Bronze Age arrived circa 1500 BC when people in the region were turning copper into bronze, growing rice, and domesticating poultry and pigs they were among the first people in the world to do so. Human remains and artifacts from this era were discovered in Manawa district in the Saga Ng division. The Iron Age began around 500 BC with the emergence of iron working settlements in an area south of present-day Mandalay. Evidence also shows the presence of rice-growing settlements of large villages and small towns that traded with their surroundings as far as China between 500 BC and 200 AD. Iron Age Burmese cultures also had influences from outside sources such as India and Thailand, as seen in their funerary practices concerning child burials. This indicates some form of communication between groups in Myanmar and other places, possibly through trade. Around the 2nd century BC the first known city-states emerged in central Myanmar. The city-states were founded as part of the southward migration by the tibeto burman speaking Paiu people, the earliest inhabitants of Myanmar of whom records are extant, from present-day Yunnan. The Paya culture was heavily influenced by trade with India, importing Buddhism as well as other cultural, architectural, and political concepts, which would have an enduring influence on later Burmese culture and political organization. By the 9th century, several city-states had sprouted across the land, the Paya in the central dry zone, Monday along the southern coastline and Arakans along the western littoral. The balance was upset when the Paiu came under repeated attacks from Nanzao between the 750s and the 830s. In the mid to late 9th century the Bamar people founded a small settlement at Bagan. It was one of several competing city-states until the late 10th century when it grew in authority and grandeur. Pagan gradually grew to absorb its surrounding states until the 1050s 1060s when Anorita founded the Pagan Kingdom, the first ever unification of the Irrawaddy Valley and its periphery. In the 12th and 13th centuries, the Pagan Empire and the Khmer Empire were two main powers in mainland Southeast Asia. The Burmese language and culture gradually became dominant in the upper Irrawaddy Valley eclipsing the Paiu, Munday, and Pali norms by the late 12th century. Theravada Buddhism slowly began to spread to the village level, although Tantric, Mahayana, Hinduism, and folk religion remained heavily entrenched. Pagans rulers and wealthy built over 10,000 Buddhist temples in the pagan capital zone alone. Repeated Mongol invasions toppled the four-century-old kingdom in 1287. Pagan's collapse was followed by 250 years of political fragmentation that lasted well into the 16th century. Like the Burmans four centuries earlier, Shan migrants who arrived with the Mongol invasion stayed behind. Several competing Shan states came to dominate the entire northwestern to eastern arc surrounding the Irrawaddy Valley. The valley too was beset with petty states until the late 14th century when two sizable powers, Ava Kingdom and Han Thawadi Kingdom, emerged. In the west, 
a politically fragmented Arakan was under competing influences of its stronger neighbors until the Kingdom of Morocco unified the Arakan coastline for the first time in 1437. Early on, Ava fought wars of unification but could never quite reassemble the lost empire. Having held off Ava, Hanthawadi entered its golden age, and Arakan went on to become a power in its own right for the next 350 years. In contrast, constant warfare left Ava greatly weakened, and it slowly disintegrated from 1481 onward. In 1527, the Confederation of Shan states conquered Ava itself and ruled Upper Myanmar until 1555. Like the pagan empire, Ava, Hanthawadi and the Shan states were all multi-ethnic polities. Despite the wars, cultural synchronization continued. This period is considered a golden age for Burmese culture. Burmese literature grew more confident, popular and stylistically diverse, and the second generation of Burmese law codes as well as the earliest Pan-Burma chronicles emerged. Hanthawadi monarchs introduced religious reforms that later spread to the rest of the country. Many splendid temples of Morocco were built during this period. Political unification returned in the mid-16th century, due to the efforts of Tongu, a former vassal state of Ava. Tongu's young, ambitious king Taban Shwedi defeated the more powerful Hanthawadi in the Tongu Hanthawadi War. His successor Bayanong went on to conquer a vast swath of mainland Southeast Asia, including the Shan states, Lan Na, Manipur, Mong Mao, the Ayutthaya Kingdom, Lan Zhang, and southern Arakan. However, the largest empire in the history of Southeast Asia unraveled soon after Bayanong's death in 1581, completely collapsing by 1599. Ayutthaya seized Tenasserim and Lan Na, and Portuguese mercenaries established Portuguese rule at Than Lion. The dynasty regrouped and defeated the Portuguese in 1613 and Siam in 1614. It restored a smaller, more manageable kingdom, encompassing Lower Myanmar, Upper Myanmar, Shan states, Lan Na, and Upper Tenasserim. The restored Taungu kings created a legal and political framework whose basic features would continue well into the 19th century. The crown completely replaced the hereditary chieftainships with appointed governorships in the entire Irrawaddy Valley, and greatly reduced the hereditary rights of Shan chiefs. Its trade and secular administrative reforms built a prosperous economy for more than 80 years. From the 1720s onward, the kingdom was beset with repeated Mythiai raids into Upper Myanmar and a nagging rebellion in Lan Na. In 1740, the Munday of Lower Myanmar founded the restored Hanthawadi Kingdom. Hanthawadi forces sacked Ava in 1752, ending the 266-year-old Taungu dynasty. After the fall of Ava, the Kanbong Hanthawadi War involved one resistance group under Ilapaya defeating the restored Hanthawadi, and by 1759, he had reunited all of Myanmar and Manipur, and driven out the French and the British, who had provided arms to Hanthawadi. By 1770, a La Paya's heirs had subdued much of Laos and fought and won the Burmese-Siamese War against Ayutthaya and the Sino-Burmese War against Qing China. With Burma preoccupied by the Chinese threat, Ayutthaya recovered its territories by 1770, and went on to capture Lan Na by 1776. Burma and Siam went to war until 1855, 
but all resulted in a stalemate, exchanging Tenisarim and Lan Na. Faced with a powerful China and a resurgent Ayutthaya in the east, King Bodapaya turned west, acquiring Arakan, Manipur, and Assam. It was the second largest empire in Burmese history but also one with a long ill-defined border with British India. The breadth of this empire was short-lived. Burma lost Arakan, Manipur, Assam, and Tenasserim to the British in the First Anglo-Burmese War. In 1852, the British easily seized Lower Burma in the Second Anglo-Burmese War. King Mindan Min tried to modernize the kingdom, and in 1875 narrowly avoided annexation by ceding the Kareni states. The British, alarmed by the consolidation of French Indochina, annexed the remainder of the country in the Third Anglo-Burmese War in 1885. Khan Vong King's extended restored Taungu's administrative reforms, and achieved unprecedented levels of internal control and external expansion. For the first time in history, the Burmese language and culture came to predominate the entire Irrawaddy Valley. The evolution and growth of Burmese literature and theatre continued, aided by an extremely high adult male literacy rate for the era. Nonetheless, the extent and pace of reforms were uneven and ultimately proved insufficient to stem the advance of British colonialism. The 18th century saw Burmese rulers, whose country had not previously been of particular interest to European traders, seek to maintain their traditional influence in the western areas of Assam, Manipur, and Arakan. Pressing them, however, was the British East India Company, which was expanding its interests eastwards over the same territory. Over the next 60 years, diplomacy, raids, treaties and compromises continued until, after three Anglo-Burmese wars, Britain proclaimed control over most of Burma. British rule brought social, economic, cultural and administrative changes. With the fall of Mandalay, all of Burma came under British rule, being annexed on January 1, 1886. Throughout the colonial era, many Indians arrived as soldiers, civil servants, construction workers and traders and, along with the Anglo-Burmese community, dominated commercial and civil life in Burma. Rangoon became the capital of British Burma and an important port between Calcutta and Singapore. Burmese resentment was strong and was vented in violent riots that paralyzed Yangon on occasion all the way until the 1930s. Some of the discontent was caused by a disrespect for Burmese culture and traditions such as the British refusal to remove shoes when they entered pagodas. Buddhist monks became the vanguards of the independence movement. U. Weissara, an activist monk, died in prison after a 166-day hunger strike to protest against a rule that forbade him to wear his Buddhist robes while imprisoned. Republic of the Union of Myanmar President's Office, Chief of State and Cabinet Members from the Central Intelligence Agency Praise for the 2011 government reforms. 2013 onwards. Nuclear weapons program. Economy. Economic history. Agriculture. Drug production. Natural resources. Tourism. Economic sanctions. Government Stakeholders in Business Economic Liberalization, Post-2011 Units of Measurement Society Demographics Largest Cities Ethnic Groups Languages Religion Health Education 
crime culture cuisine sport art media and communications internet film notes bibliography general information about myanmar burma myanmar search engine burma the world factbook central intelligence agency burma from ucb libraries gov pubs myanmar at kali burma profile from the bbc news Myanmar at Encyclopedia Britannica, geographic data related to Myanmar at OpenStreetMap, Wikimedia Atlas of Myanmar, interactive timeline of turning points in Burmese history, key development forecasts for Myanmar from International Futures, online Burma slash Myanmar library, Classified and annotated links to more than 17,000 full-text documents on Burma slash Myanmar. Taipei American Chamber of Commerce, Topics Magazine, Analysis, November 2012 Myanmar, Southeast Asia's Last Frontier for Investment, by David Dubine Myanmar Business Today, Print Edition February 27, 2014 A Roadmap to Building Myanmar into the Food Basket of Asia, by David Dubine and Hishamud and KOH, Myanmar Business Today, Print Edition, June 19, 2014 Myanmar's Institutional Infrastructure Constraints and How to Fill the Gaps, by David Dubine and Hishamud and KOH World Bank Summary Trade Statistics Myanmar Myanmar Marine Biodiversity Atlas Online from the Wildlife Conservation Society and University of Exeter On April 1, 1937, Burma became a separately administered colony of Great Britain and Bama the first Prime Minister and Premier of Burma. Bama was an outspoken advocate for Burmese self-rule and he opposed the participation of Great Britain, and by extension Burma, in World War II. He resigned from the Legislative Assembly and was arrested for sedition. In 1940, before Japan formally entered the Second World War, Aung San formed the Burma Independence Army in Japan. A Major Battleground Burma was devastated during World War II. By March 1942, within months after they entered the war, Japanese troops had advanced on Rangoon and the British administration had collapsed. A Burmese executive administration headed by Bama was established by the Japanese in August 1942. Wingate's British Chindits were formed into long-range penetration groups trained to operate deep behind Japanese lines. A similar American unit, Merrill's Marauders, followed the Chindits into the Burmese jungle in 1943. Beginning in late 1944, Allied troops launched a series of offensives that led to the end of Japanese rule in July 1945. The battles were intense with much of Burma laid waste by the fighting. Overall, the Japanese lost some 150,000 men in Burma. Only 1,700 prisoners were taken. Although many Burmese fought initially for the Japanese as part of the Burma Independence Army, many Burmese, mostly from the ethnic minorities, served in the British Burma Army. The Burma National Army and the Arakan National Army fought with the Japanese from 1942 to 1944 but switched allegiance to the Allied side in 1945. Under Japanese occupation, 170,000 to 250,000 civilians died. Following World War II, Aung San negotiated the Peng Long Agreement with ethnic leaders that guaranteed the independence of Myanmar as a unified state. Aung San Wei, 
P.E. Kin, Bo Humuong, Sir Mong Gyi, Dr. Sen Maya Mong, Myoma Youth and Kai We were among the negotiators of the historical Peng Long Conference negotiated with Bamar leader General Ong San and other ethnic leaders in 1947. In 1947, Ong San became deputy chairman of the Executive Council of Myanmar, a transitional government. But in July 1947, political rivals assassinated Ong San and several cabinet members. On January 4, 1948, the nation became an independent republic, named the Union of Burma with Cao Shui Take as its first president and Yu Nu as its first prime minister. Unlike most other former British colonies and overseas territories, Burma did not become a member of the Commonwealth. A bicameral parliament was formed, consisting of a chamber of deputies and a chamber of nationalities, and multi-party elections were held in 1951, 1952, 1956, and 1960. The geographical area Burma encompasses today can be traced to the Peng Long Agreement, which combined Burma proper, which consisted of Lower Burma and Upper Burma, and the frontier areas, which had been administered separately by the British. In 1961, Uthant, then the Union of Burma's permanent representative to the United Nations and former secretary to the Prime Minister, was elected Secretary General of the United Nations, a position he held for ten years. Among the Burmese to work at the UN when he was Secretary General was a young Aung San Suukyi, who went on to become winner of the 1991 Nobel Peace Prize. When the non-Burman ethnic groups pushed for autonomy or federalism, alongside having a weak civilian government at the center, the military leadership staged a coup d'état in 1962. Though incorporated in the 1947 constitution, successive military governments construed the use of the term federalism as being anti-national, anti-unity and pro-disintegration. On March 2, 1962, the military led by General N.E. Win took control of Burma through a coup d'état, and the government has been under direct or indirect control by the military since then. Between 1962 and 1974, Myanmar was ruled by a revolutionary council headed by the general. Almost all aspects of society were nationalized or brought under government control under the Burmese way to socialism, which combined Soviet-style nationalization and central planning. A new constitution of the Socialist Republic of the Union of Burma was adopted in 1974. Until 1988, the country was ruled as a one-party system, with the general and other military officers resigning and ruling through the Burma Socialist Program Party. During this period, Myanmar became one of the world's most impoverished countries. There were sporadic protests against military rule during the NE Win years and these were almost always violently suppressed. On July 7, 1962, the government broke up demonstrations at Rangoon University, killing 15 students. In 1974, the military violently suppressed anti-government protests at the funeral of Youth Ant. Student protests in 1975, 1976 and 1977 were quickly suppressed by overwhelming force. In 1988, Unrest over economic mismanagement and political oppression by the government led to widespread pro-democracy demonstrations throughout the country known as the 8,888 Uprising. Security forces killed thousands of demonstrators, and General Song Wang staged a coup d'état and formed the State Law and Order Restoration Council. In 1989, Slork declared martial law after widespread protests. 
The military government finalized plans for People's Assembly elections on May 31, 1989. Slork changed the country's official English name from the Socialist Republic of the Union of Burma to the Union of Myanmar in 1989. In May 1990, the government held free elections for the first time in almost 30 years and the National League for Democracy, the party of Aung San Suukyi, won 392 out of a total 492 seats. However, the military junta refused to cede power and continued to rule the nation as Slork until 1997 and then as the State Peace and Development Council until its dissolution in March 2011. On June 23, 1997, Myanmar was admitted into the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. On March 27, 2006, the military junta, which had moved the national capital from Yangon to a site near Pianmana in November 2005, officially named the new capital Napiada, meaning City of the Kings. In August 2007, an increase in the price of diesel and petrol led to the Saffron Revolution led by Buddhist monks that were dealt with harshly by the government. The government cracked down on them on September 26, 2007. The crackdown was harsh, with reports of barricades at the Shwedagon Pagoda and monks killed. There were also rumors of disagreement within the Burmese armed forces, but none was confirmed. The military crackdown against unarmed protesters was widely condemned as part of the international reactions to the Saffron Revolution and led to an increase in economic sanctions against the Burmese government. In May 2008, Cyclone Nargis caused extensive damage in the densely populated, rice farming delta of the Irrawaddy Division. It was the worst natural disaster in Burmese history with reports of an estimated 200,000 people dead or missing, damage totaled to 10 billion US dollars, and as many as 1 million left homeless. In the critical days following this disaster, Myanmar's isolationist government was accused of hindering United Nations recovery efforts. Humanitarian aid was requested but concerns about foreign military or intelligence presence in the country delayed the entry of United States military planes delivering medicine, food, and other supplies. In early August 2009, a conflict known as the Kakang Incident broke out in Shan State in northern Myanmar. For several weeks, junta troops fought against ethnic minorities including the Han Chinese, WA, and Kachin. During 8-12 August, the first days of the conflict, as many as 10,000 Burmese civilians fled to Yunnan province in neighboring China. Civil wars have been a constant feature of Myanmar's socio-political landscape since the attainment of independence in 1948. These wars are predominantly struggles for ethnic and sub-national autonomy, with the areas surrounding the ethnically Bamar central districts of the country serving as the primary geographical setting of conflict. Foreign journalists and visitors require a special travel permit to visit the areas in which Myanmar's civil wars continue. In October 2012, the ongoing conflicts in Myanmar included the Kachin conflict, between the pro-Christian Kachin Independence Army and the government, a civil war between the Rohingya Muslims, and the government and non-government groups in Rakhine State and a conflict between the Shan, Lahu, and Karen minority groups, and the government in the eastern half of the country. In addition, Al-Qaeda signaled an intention to become involved in Myanmar. In a video released on September 3, 2014, mainly addressed to India, the militant group's leader Ayman al-Zawahiri said Al-Qaeda had not forgotten the Muslims of Myanmar and that the group was doing what they can to rescue you.
In response, the military raised its level of alertness, while the Burmese Muslim Association issued a statement saying Muslims would not tolerate any threat to their motherland. Armed conflict between ethnic Chinese rebels and the Myanmar armed forces have resulted in the Kakang Offensive in February 2015. The conflict had forced 40,000 to 50,000 civilians to flee their homes and seek shelter on the Chinese side of the border. During the incident, the government of China was accused of giving military assistance to the ethnic Chinese rebels. Burmese officials have been historically manipulated and pressured by the Chinese government throughout Burmese modern history to create closer and binding ties with China, creating a Chinese satellite state in Southeast Asia. However, uncertainties exist as clashes between Burmese troops and local insurgent groups continue. The goal of the Burmese constitutional referendum of 2008 held on May 10, 2008, is the creation of a disciplined flourishing democracy. As part of the referendum process, the name of the country was changed from the Union of Myanmar to the Republic of the Union of Myanmar, and general elections were held under the new constitution in 2010. Observer accounts of the 2010 election describe the event as mostly peaceful, However, allegations of polling station irregularities were raised, and the United Nations and a number of Western countries condemned the elections as fraudulent. The military-backed Union Solidarity and Development Party declared victory in the 2010 elections, stating that it had been favored by 80% of the votes, however. The claim was disputed by numerous pro-democracy opposition groups who asserted that the military regime had engaged in rampant fraud. One report documented 77% as the official turnout rate of the election. The military junta was dissolved on March 30, 2011. Opinions differ whether the transition to liberal democracy is underway. According to some reports, the military's presence continues as the label disciplined democracy suggests. This label asserts that the Burmese military is allowing certain civil liberties while clandestinely institutionalizing itself further into Burmese politics. Such an assertion assumes that reforms only occurred when the military was able to safeguard its own interests through the transition here. Transition does not refer to a transition to a liberal democracy, but transition to a quasi-military rule. Since the 2010 election, the government has embarked on a series of reforms to direct the country towards liberal democracy, a mixed economy, and reconciliation, although doubts persist about the motives that underpin such reforms. The series of reforms includes the release of pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi from house arrest, the establishment of the National Human Rights Commission, the granting of general amnesties for more than 200 political prisoners, new labor laws that permit labor unions and strikes, a relaxation of press censorship, and the regulation of currency practices. The impact of the post-election reforms has been observed in numerous areas, including ASEAN's approval of Myanmar's bid for the position of ASEAN chair in 2014, the visit by United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in December 2011 for the encouragement of further progress, which was the first visit by a Secretary of State in more than 50 years during which Clinton met with the Burmese president and former military commander Thien Sen, as well as opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi. And the participation of Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy Party in the 2012 by-elections, facilitated by the government's abolition of the laws that previously barred the NLD. As of July 2013, about 100 political prisoners remain imprisoned, 
while conflict between the Burmese army and local insurgent groups continues. In April 1, 2012 by-elections, the NLD won 43 of the 45 available seats, previously an illegal organization, the NLD had not won a single seat under new constitution. The 2012 by-elections were also the first time that international representatives were allowed to monitor the voting process in Myanmar. General elections were held on November 8, 2015. These were the first openly contested elections held in Myanmar since 1990. The results gave the National League for Democracy an absolute majority of seats in both chambers of the national parliament, enough to ensure that its candidate would become president, while NLD leader Aung San Suu Kyi is constitutionally barred from the presidency. The new parliament convened on February 1, 2016 and, on March 15, 2016, Hdin Kaya was elected as the first non-military president since the military coup of 1962. On April 6, 2016, Aung San Suu Kyi assumed the newly created role of state councillor, a role akin to a prime minister. Myanmar has a total area of 678,500 square kilometres. It lies between latitudes 9 degrees and 29 degrees north, and longitudes 92 degrees and 102 degrees east. As of February 2011, Myanmar consisted of 14 states and regions, 67 districts, 330 townships, 64 sub-townships, 377 towns. 2,914 wards, 14,220 village tracks and 68,290 villages. Myanmar is bordered in the northwest by the Chittagong Division of Bangladesh and the Mizoram, Manipur, Nagaland and Arunachal Pradesh states of India. Its north and northeast border is with the Tibet Autonomous Region and Yunnan Province for a Sino-Myanmar border total of 2,185 km. It is bounded by Laos and Thailand to the southeast. Myanmar has 1,930 km of contiguous coastline along the Bay of Bengal and Andaman Sea to the southwest and the south which forms one quarter of its total perimeter. In the north, the Hungduan Mountains form the border with China. Hakaborezi, located in Kachin State, at an elevation of 5,881 meters, is the highest point in Myanmar. Many mountain ranges, such as the Rocky Yuma, the Bago Yuma, the Shan Hills and the Tenasserim Hills exist within Myanmar, all of which run north to south from the Himalayas. The mountain chains divide Myanmar's three river systems, which are the Irrawaddy, Salween, and the Sitong rivers. The Irrawaddy River, Myanmar's longest river, nearly 2,170 km long, flows into the Gulf of Martaban. Fertile plains exist in the valleys between the mountain chains. The majority of Myanmar's population lives in the Irrawaddy Valley, which is situated between the Rocky Nyuma and the Shan Plateau. Myanmar is divided into seven states and seven regions, formerly called divisions. Regions are predominantly Bamar. States, in essence, are regions that are home to particular ethnic minorities. The administrative divisions are further subdivided into districts, which are further subdivided into townships, wards, and villages. Below are the number of districts, townships, cities-slash-towns, wards, village groups and villages in each divisions and states of Myanmar as of December 31, 2001. 
Much of the country lies between the Tropic of Cancer and the Equator. It lies in the monsoon region of Asia, with its coastal regions receiving over 5,000 mm of rain annually. Annual rainfall in the Delta region is approximately 2,500 mm, while average annual rainfall in the dry zone in central Myanmar is less than 1,000 mm. The northern regions of Myanmar are the coolest, with average temperatures of 21 degrees Celsius. Coastal and delta regions have an average maximum temperature of 32 degrees Celsius. Myanmar continues to perform badly in the Global Environmental Performance Index with an overall ranking of 153 out of 180 countries in 2016 among the worst in the South Asian region, only ahead of Bangladesh and Afghanistan. The AP was established in 2001 by the World Economic Forum as a global gauge to measure how well individual countries perform in implementing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The environmental areas where Myanmar performs worst are air quality, health impacts of environmental issues and biodiversity and habitat. Myanmar performs best in environmental impacts of fisheries, but with declining fish stocks. Despite several issues, Myanmar also ranks 64 and scores very good in environmental effects of the agricultural industry because of an excellent management of the nitrogen cycle. Myanmar's slow economic growth has contributed to the preservation of much of its environment and ecosystems. Forests, including dense tropical growth and valuable teak in lower Myanmar, cover over 49% of the country, including areas of acacia, bamboo, ironwood and magnolia champaca. Coconut and beetle palm and rubber have been introduced. In the highlands of the north, oak, pine and various rhododendrons cover much of the land. Heavy logging since the new 1995 forestry law went into effect has seriously reduced forest acreage and wildlife habitat. The lands along the coast support all varieties of tropical fruits and once had large areas of mangroves although much of the protective mangroves have disappeared. In much of central Myanmar, vegetation is sparse and stunted. Typical jungle animals, particularly tigers, occur sparsely in Myanmar. In upper Myanmar, there are rhinoceros, wild water buffalo, clouded leopard, wild boars, deer, antelope, and elephants, which are also tamed or bred in captivity for use as work animals particularly in the lumber industry. Smaller mammals are also numerous, ranging from gibbons and monkeys to flying foxes. The abundance of birds is notable with over 800 species, including parrots, mina, peafowl, red jungle fowl, weaver birds, crows, herons, and barn owl. Among reptile species there are crocodiles, geckos, cobras, Burmese pythons, and turtles. Hundreds of species of freshwater fish are wide-ranging, plentiful, and are very important food sources. For a list of protected areas, see List of Protected Areas of Myanmar. The Constitution of Myanmar, its third since independence was drafted by its military rulers and published in September 2008. The country is governed as a parliamentary system with a bicameral legislature, with 25% of the legislators appointed by the military and the rest elected in general elections. The legislature, called the P.I. Dasulhlata, is bicameral and made up of two houses, the 224-seat Upper House A. Myotha Hlata and the 440-seat Lower House P. E. Thuhlata. The Upper House consists of 224 members, of whom 168 are directly elected and 56 are appointed by the Burmese Armed Forces. 
The lower house consists of 440 members, of whom 330 are directly elected and 110 are appointed by the armed forces. The major political parties are the National League for Democracy and Union Solidarity and Development Party. Myanmar's army drafted constitution was approved in a referendum in May 2008. The results, 92.4% of the 22 million voters with an official turnout of 99%, are considered suspect by many international observers and by the National League of Democracy with reports of widespread fraud, ballot stuffing, and voter intimidation. The elections of 2010 resulted in a victory for the military-backed Union Solidarity and Development Party. Various foreign observers questioned the fairness of the elections. One criticism of the election was that only government-sanctioned political parties were allowed to contest in it and the popular National League for Democracy was declared illegal. However, immediately following the elections, the government ended the house arrest of the democracy advocate and leader of the National League for Democracy, Aung San Suukyi, and her ability to move freely around the country is considered an important test of the military's movement toward more openness. After unexpected reforms in 2011, NLD senior leaders have decided to register as a political party and to field candidates in future by-elections. Myanmar's recent political history is underlined by its struggle to establish democratic structures amidst conflicting factions. This political transition from a closely held military rule to a free democratic system is widely believed to be determining the future of Myanmar. The resounding victory of Aung San Suukyi's National League for Democracy in 2015 general elections has raised hope for a successful culmination of this transition. Myanmar rates as a corrupt nation on the Corruption Perceptions Index with a rank of 136th out of 176 countries worldwide, with first being least corrupt as of 2016. Though the country's foreign relations, particularly with Western nations, have been strained, relations have thawed since the reforms following the 2010 elections. After years of diplomatic isolation and economic and military sanctions, the United States relaxed curbs on foreign aid to Myanmar in November 2011 and announced the resumption of diplomatic relations on January 13, 2012. The European Union has placed sanctions on Myanmar, including an arms embargo, cessation of trade preferences, and suspension of all aid with the exception of humanitarian aid. Sanctions imposed by the United States and European countries against the former military government, coupled with boycotts and other direct pressure on corporations by supporters of the democracy movement, have resulted in the withdrawal from the country of most U.S. and many European companies. On April 13, 2012 British Prime Minister David Cameron called for the economic sanctions on Myanmar to be suspended in the wake of the pro-democracy party gaining 43 seats out of a possible 45 in the 2012 by-elections with the party leader, Aung San Suukyi becoming a member of the Burmese parliament. Despite Western isolation, Asian corporations have generally remained willing to continue investing in the country and to initiate new investments, particularly in natural resource extraction. The country has close relations with neighboring India and China with several Indian and Chinese companies operating in the country. Under India's Look East policy, fields of cooperation between India and Myanmar include remote sensing, oil and gas exploration, information technology, hydropower, and construction of ports and buildings. In 2008, 
India suspended military aid to Myanmar over the issue of human rights abuses by the ruling junta, although it has preserved extensive commercial ties, which provide the regime with much needed revenue. The thaw in relations began on November 28, 2011, when Belarusian Prime Minister Mikhail Myaznikovich and his wife Ludmila arrived in the capital, Napiada, the same day as the country received a visit by U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who also met with pro-democracy opposition leader Aung San Suukyi. International relations progress indicators continued in September 2012 when Aung San Suukyi visited the United States followed by Myanmar's reformist president visit to the United Nations. In May 2013, Thien Sen became the first Myanmar president to visit the White House in 47 years. The last Burmese leader to visit the White House was Eni Win in September 1966. President Barack Obama praised the former general for political and economic reforms, and the cessation of tensions between Myanmar and the United States. Political activists objected to the visit due to concerns over human rights abuses in Myanmar but Obama assured Thien Sen that Myanmar will receive U.S. support. The two leaders discussed to release more political prisoners, the institutionalization of political reform and rule of law, and ending ethnic conflict in Myanmar The two governments agreed to sign a bilateral trade and investment framework agreement on May 21, 2013. In June 2013, Myanmar held its first ever summit. The World Economic Forum on East Asia 2013 A regional spin-off of the annual World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, the summit was held on 5-7 June and attended by 1,200 participants, including 10 heads of state, 12 ministers and 40 senior directors from around the world. Myanmar has received extensive military aid from China in the past. Myanmar has been a member of ASEAN since 1997. Though it gave up its turn to hold the ASEAN chair and host the ASEAN summit in 2006, it chaired the forum and hosted the summit in 2014. In November 2008, Myanmar's political situation with neighboring Bangladesh became tense as they began searching for natural gas in a disputed block of the Bay of Bengal. Controversy surrounding the Rohingya population also remains an issue between Bangladesh and Myanmar. Myanmar's armed forces are known as the Tatmada, which numbers 488,000. The Tatmada comprises the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. The country ranked 12th in the world for its number of active troops in service. The military is very influential in Myanmar, with all top cabinet and ministry posts usually held by military officials. Official figures for military spending are not available. Estimates vary widely because of uncertain exchange rates, but Myanmar's military forces' expenses are high. Myanmar imports most of its weapons from Russia, Ukraine, China, and India. Myanmar is building a research nuclear reactor near Pyongyang Win with help from Russia. It is one of the signatories of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Pact since 1992 and a member of the International Atomic Energy Agency since 1957. The military junta had informed the IAEA in September 2000 of its intention to construct the reactor. The research reactor outbuilding frame was built by ELE Steel Industries Limited of Yangon slash Rangoon and water from Anisakon slash B waterfall will be used for the reactor cavity cooling system. In 2010 as part of the WikiLeaks leaked cables, Myanmar was suspected of using North Korean construction teams to build a fortified surface-to-air missile facility.
Until 2005, the United Nations General Assembly annually adopted a detailed resolution about the situation in Myanmar by consensus. But in 2006 a divided United Nations General Assembly voted through a resolution that strongly called upon the government of Myanmar to end its systematic violations of human rights. In January 2007, Russia and China vetoed a draft resolution before the United Nations Security Council calling on the government of Myanmar to respect human rights and begin a democratic transition. South Africa also voted against the resolution. There is consensus that the former military regime in Myanmar was one of the world's most repressive and abusive regimes. In November 2012, Samantha Power, Barack Obama's special assistant to the President on Human Rights, wrote on the White House blog in advance of the President's visit that serious human rights abuses against civilians in several regions continue, including against women and children. Members of the United Nations and major international human rights organizations have issued repeated and consistent reports of widespread and systematic human rights violations in Myanmar. The United Nations General Assembly has repeatedly called on the Burmese military junta to respect human rights and in November 2009 the General Assembly adopted a resolution strongly condemning the ongoing systematic violations of human rights and fundamental freedoms and calling on the Burmese military regime to take urgent measures to put an end to violations of international human rights and humanitarian law. International human rights organizations including Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International and the American Association for the Advancement of Science have repeatedly documented and condemned widespread human rights violations in Myanmar. The Freedom in the World 2011 report by Freedom House notes, the military junta has suppressed nearly all basic rights and committed human rights abuses with impunity. In July 2013, the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners indicated that there were approximately 100 political prisoners being held in Burmese prisons. Evidence gathered by a British researcher was published in 2005 regarding the extermination or Burmization of certain ethnic minorities such as the Karen, Kareni, and Shan. Child soldiers had played a major part in the Burmese army until around 2012. The Independent reported in June 2012 that children are being sold as conscripts into the Burmese military for as little as $40 in a bag of rice or a can of petrol. The UN Special Representative of the Secretary-General for Children and Armed Conflict, Radhika Kumareswamy, who stepped down from her position a week later, met representatives of the government of Myanmar on July 5, 2012 and stated that she hoped the government's signing of an action plan would signal a transformation. In September 2012, the Myanmar Armed Forces released 42 child soldiers and the International Labour Organization met with representatives of the government as well as the Kachin Independence Army to secure the release of more child soldiers. According to Samantha Power, a U.S. delegation raised the issue of child soldiers with the government in October 2012. However, she did not comment on the government's progress towards reform in this area. A Bangkok Post article on December 23, 2012 reported that the Myanmar Armed Forces continued to use child soldiers including during the army's large offensive against the Kia in December 2012. Forced labor, human trafficking, and child labor are common. The military is also notorious for rampant use of sexual violence, a practice continuing as of 2012. In 2007 the international movement to defend women's human rights issues in Myanmar was said to be gaining speed.
the Rohingya people have consistently faced human rights abuses by the Burmese regime that has refused to acknowledge them as Burmese citizens. The Rohingya have been denied Burmese citizenship since the enactment of a 1982 citizenship law. The law created three categories of citizenship citizenship, associate citizenship, and naturalized citizenship. Citizenship is given to those who belong to one of the national races such as Kachin, Kaya, Karen, Chin, Burman, Munday, Rakhin, Shan, Common, or Zerbadi. Associate citizenship is given to those who cannot prove their ancestors settled in Myanmar before 1823, but can prove they have one grandparent, or pre-1823 ancestor, who was a citizen of another country, as well as people who applied for citizenship in 1948 and qualified then by those laws. Naturalized citizenship is only given to those who have at least one parent with one of these types of Burmese citizenship or can provide conclusive evidence that their parents entered and resided in Burma prior to independence in 1948. The Burmese regime has attempted to forcibly expel Rohingya and bring in non-Rohingyas to replace them. This policy has resulted in the expulsion of approximately half of the 800,000 Rohingya from Burma, while the Rohingya people have been described as among the world's least wanted and one of the world's most persecuted minorities. But the origin of most persecuted minority statement is unclear. Rohingya are also not allowed to travel without official permission, are banned from owning land and are required to sign a commitment to have no more than two children. As of July 2012, the Myanmar government does not include the Rohingya minority group classified as stateless Bengali Muslims from Bangladesh since 1982 on the government's list of more than 130 ethnic races and Therefore, the government states that they have no claim to Myanmar citizenship. In 2007 the German professor Bassam Tibi suggested that the Rohingya conflict may be driven by an Islamist political agenda to impose religious laws, while non-religious causes have also been raised, such as a lingering resentment over the violence that occurred during the Japanese occupation of Burma in World War II. During this time period the British allied themselves with the Rohingya and fought against the puppet government of Burma that helped to establish the Tatmadaw military. Organization that remains in power as of March 2013. Since the democratic transition began in 2011, there has been continuous violence as 280 people have been killed and 140,000 forced to flee from their homes in the Rakhine state. A UN envoy reported in March 2013 that unrest had re-emerged between Myanmar's Buddhist and Muslim communities, with violence spreading to towns that are located closer to Yangon. The Rohingya have been leaving the Rakhine state by boat in search for jobs in Malaysia these recent years. Often, the boats are very small and dangerous on the open seas. An estimated 100,000 Rohingya have fled Myanmar in the last two years in fear of persecution and violence. They have been fleeing to Thailand, Malaysia, or even Australia for refuge. Over 200 have died in recent years and over 7,000 have been held in detention centers even after surviving the boat trip. A widely publicized Burmese conflict was the 2012 Rakhine State Riots, a series of conflicts that primarily involved the ethnic Rakhine Buddhist people and the Rohingya Muslim people in the northern Rakhine state an estimated 90,000 people were displaced as a result of the riots. The immediate cause of the riots is unclear, with many commentators citing the killing of 10 Burmese Muslims by ethnic Rakhine after the rape and murder of a Rakhine woman as the main cause. Whole villages have been decimated. 
Over 300 houses and a number of public buildings have been razed. According to Tun Kin, the president of the Burmese Rohingya Organization UK, as of June 28, 2012, 650 Rohingyas have been killed, 1,200 are missing, and more than 80,000 have been displaced. According to the Myanmar authorities, the violence, between ethnic Rakhine Buddhists and Rohingya Muslims, left 78 people dead, 87 injured, and thousands of homes destroyed. It displaced more than 52,000 people. The government has responded by imposing curfews and by deploying troops in the regions. On June 10, 2012, a state of emergency was declared in Rakhine, allowing the military to participate in administration of the region. The Burmese army and police have been accused of targeting Rohingya Muslims through mass arrests and arbitrary violence. A number of monks organizations that played a vital role in Myanmar's struggle for democracy have taken measures to block any humanitarian assistance to the Rohingya community. Restrictions on media censorship were significantly eased in August 2012 following demonstrations by hundreds of protesters who wore shirts demanding that the government stop killing the press. The most significant change has come in the form that media organizations will no longer have to submit their content to a censorship board before publication. However, as explained by one editorial in the exiled press The Irrawaddy, this new freedom has caused some Burmese journalists to simply see the new law as an attempt to create an environment of self-censorship as journalists are required to follow 16 guidelines towards protecting the three national causes non-disintegration of the union, non-disintegration of national solidarity, perpetuation of sovereignty and journalistic ethics to ensure their stories are accurate and do not jeopardize national security. In July 2014 five journalists were sentenced to 10 years in jail after publishing a report saying the country was planning to build a new chemical weapons plant. Journalists described the jailings as a blow to the recently won news media freedoms that had followed five decades of censorship and persecution. Two Reuters journalists were charged and imprisoned on December 12, 2017, for violating state secrets law when they were covering the mass exodus of the Rohingya Muslim minority. According to the Crisis Group, since Myanmar transitioned to a new government in August 2011, the country's human rights record has been improving. Previously giving Myanmar its lowest rating of 7, the 2012 Freedom in the World report also notes improvement, giving Myanmar a 6 for improvements in civil liberties and political rights, the release of political prisoners, and a loosening of restrictions. In 2013, Myanmar improved yet again, receiving a score of 5 in civil liberties and a 6 in political freedoms. The government has assembled a National Human Rights Commission that consists of 15 members from various backgrounds. Several activists in exile, including the Lay the Nyint members, have returned to Myanmar after President Thien Sen's invitation to expatriates to return home to work for national development. In an address to the United Nations Security Council on September 22, 2011, Myanmar's Foreign Minister Wuna Mongolwin confirmed the government's intention to release prisoners in the near future. The government has also relaxed reporting laws but these remain highly restrictive. In September 2011, several banned websites, including YouTube, Democratic Voice of Burma and Voice of America, were unblocked. A 2011 report by the Hauser Center for Nonprofit Organizations found that, while contact with the Myanmar government was constrained by donor restrictions, 
international humanitarian non-governmental organizations see opportunities for effective advocacy with government officials, especially at the local level. At the same time, international NGOs are mindful of the ethical quandary of how to work with the government without bolstering or appeasing it. Following Theon Sen's first ever visit to the UK and a meeting with Prime Minister David Cameron, the Myanmar president declared that all of his nation's political prisoners will be released by the end of 2013, in addition to a statement of support for the well-being of the Rohingya Muslim community. In a speech at Chatham House, he revealed that we are reviewing all cases. I guarantee to you that by the end of this year, there will be no prisoners of conscience in Myanmar, in addition to expressing a desire to strengthen links between the UK and Myanmar's military forces. Homosexual acts are illegal in Myanmar. In 2016, Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi was accused of failing to protect Myanmar's Muslim minority. Since August 2017 Doctors Without Borders have treated 113 Rohingya refugee females for sexual assault with all but one describing military assailants. There has been speculation that Myanmar is interested in developing nuclear weapons, and that North Korea was planning to export nuclear technology to Myanmar. These reports are based on evidence gathered from anti-government Burmese. Myanmar is a signatory to a special ASEAN treaty that bans all types of nuclear weapons in signatory states in Southeast Asia. Myanmar is one of the poorest nations in Southeast Asia, suffering from decades of stagnation, mismanagement, and isolation. The lack of an educated workforce skilled in modern technology hinders Myanmar's economy, although recent reforms and developments carried out by the new government, in collaboration with foreign countries and organizations aim to make this a thing of the past. Myanmar lacks adequate infrastructure. Goods travel primarily across the Thai border and along the Irrawaddy River. Railways are old and rudimentary, with few repairs since their construction in the late 19th century. Highways are normally unpaved, except in the major cities. In 2010-2011, Bangladesh exported products worth $9.65 million to Myanmar against its import of $179 million. The annual import of medicine and medical equipment to Myanmar during the 2000s was 160 million US dollars. In recent years, both China and India have attempted to strengthen ties with the government for economic benefit. Many nations, including the United States and Canada, and the European Union, have imposed investment and trade sanctions on Myanmar. The United States and European Union eased most of their sanctions in 2012. Foreign investment comes primarily from China, Singapore, the Philippines, South Korea, India, and Thailand. Under British administration, Myanmar was the second wealthiest country in Southeast Asia. It had been the world's largest exporter of rice. Myanmar also had a wealth of natural and labor resources. British Burma began exporting crude oil in 1853, making it one of the earliest petroleum producers in the world. It produced 75% of the world's teak and had a highly literate population. The wealth was however, mainly concentrated in the hands of Europeans. In the 1930s, agricultural production fell dramatically as international rice prices declined, and did not recover for several decades. Plans to broaden the new prosperity and extend the reach of modern civilization were halted by the outbreak of the Second World War. During the Japanese invasion of the area in World War II, 
the British followed a scorched earth policy. They destroyed the major government buildings, oil wells and mines for tungsten, tin, lead and silver to keep them from the Japanese. Myanmar was bombed extensively by both sides. After independence, the country was in ruins with its major infrastructure completely destroyed. The British then granted independence to the colony, and handed over their plans to rebuild to the new government. After a parliamentary government was formed in 1948, Prime Minister Yu Nu embarked upon a policy of nationalization and the state was declared the owner of all land. The government also tried to implement a poorly considered eight year plan. By the 1950s, rice exports had fallen by two thirds and mineral exports by over 96%. Plans were partly financed by printing money, which led to inflation. The 1962 coup d'etat was followed by an economic scheme called the Burmese Way to Socialism, a plan to nationalize all industries, with the exception of agriculture. The catastrophic program turned Myanmar into one of the world's most impoverished countries. Myanmar's admittance to least developed country status by the UN in 1987 highlighted its economic bankruptcy. In Myanmar, political and economic ideological struggles have affected living standards. Decades of civil war and unrest have contributed to Myanmar's current levels of poverty and lack of economic progress. Improving basic human, social and economic infrastructure required to advance individual living standards have not received focused government efforts. The major agricultural product is rice, which covers about 60% of the country's total cultivated land area. Rice accounts for 97% of total food grain production by weight. Through collaboration with the International Rice Research Institute 52 modern rice varieties were released in the country between 1966 and 1997 helping increase national rice production to 14 million tons in 1987 and to 19 million tons in 1996. By 1988, modern varieties were planted on half of the country's ricelands, including 98% of the irrigated areas. In 2008 rice production was estimated at 50 million tons. Myanmar is also the world's second largest producer of opium, accounting for 25% of entire world production and is a major source of illegal drugs, including amphetamines. Opium bans implemented since 2002 after international pressure have left ex poppy farmers without sustainable sources of income in the Kakang and WA regions. They depend on casual labor for income. Myanmar produces precious stones such as rubies, sapphires, pearls, and jade. Rubies are the biggest earner, 90% of the world's rubies come from the country, whose red stones are prized for their purity and hue. Thailand buys the majority of the country's gems. Myanmar's Valley of Rubies, the mountainous Magok area, 200 kilometers north of Mandalay, is noted for its rare pigeons blood rubies and blue sapphires. Many US and European jewelry companies, including Bulgari, Tiffany and Cartier, refuse to import these stones based on reports of deplorable working conditions in the mines. Human Rights Watch has encouraged a complete ban on the purchase of Burmese gems based on these reports and because nearly all profits go to the ruling junta as the majority of mining activity in the country is government-run. The government of Myanmar controls the gem trade by direct ownership or by joint ventures with private owners of mines. Other industries include agricultural goods, textiles, wood products, construction materials, gems, metals, oil, and natural gas.
Myanmar Engineering Society has identified at least 39 locations capable of geothermal power production and some of these hydrothermal reservoirs lie quite close to Yangon which is a significant underutilized resource for electrical production. Since 1992, the government has encouraged tourism in the country, however, Fewer than 270,000 tourists entered the country in 2006 according to the Myanmar Tourism Promotion Board. Myanmar's Minister of Hotels and Tourism Salwin has stated that the government receives a significant percentage of the income of private sector tourism services. The most popular available tourist destinations in Myanmar include big cities such as Yangon and Mandalay. Religious sites in Munday State, Pandaya, Bago, and Hpaan, nature trails in Inal Lake, Kengtung, Pudao, Pianolwin, ancient cities such as Bagan and Mrakyu, as well as beaches in Nabul, Ngapali, and Gwisong, Mergui. Nevertheless, much of the country is off limits to tourists and interactions between foreigners and the people of Myanmar, particularly in the border regions, are subject to police scrutiny. They are not to discuss politics with foreigners, under penalty of imprisonment and, in 2001, the Myanmar Tourism Promotion Board issued an order for local officials to protect tourists and limit unnecessary contact between foreigners and ordinary Burmese people. The most common way for travelers to enter the country seems to be by air. According to the website Lonely Planet, getting into Myanmar is problematic, no bus or train service connects Myanmar with another country, nor can you travel by car or motorcycle across the border you must walk across, and states that, it is not possible for foreigners to go to slash from Myanmar by sea or river. There are a small number of border crossings that allow the passage of private vehicles, such as the border between Rulai to Muesi, the border between Hdiki and Phunam Ron, the most direct border between Daei and Kanchanaburi, and the border between Mayawadi and Maysot. At least one tourist company has successfully run commercial overland routes through these borders since 2013. From Maesai you can cross to Takaliak, but can only go as far as Kengtung. Those in Thailand on a visa run can cross to Kothong but cannot venture farther into Myanmar. Flights are available from most countries, though direct flights are limited to mainly Thai and other ASEAN airlines. According to Eleven magazine, in the past, there were only 15 international airlines and increasing numbers of airlines have began launching direct flights from Japan, Qatar, Taiwan, South Korea, Germany, and Singapore. Expansions were expected in September 2013, but yet again are mainly Thai and other Asian-based airlines according to 11 Media Group S11. Thailand-based Nokair and Business Airlines and Singapore-based Tiger Airline. The government of Myanmar was under economic sanctions by the U.S. Treasury Department and by Executive Orders 13,047, 13,310, 13,448, 13,464, and the most recent, 13,619. There exists debate as to the extent to which the American-led sanctions have had more adverse effects on the civilian population than on the military rulers. From May 2012 to February 2013, the United States began to lift its economic sanctions on Myanmar in response to the historic reforms that have been taking place in that country. Sanctions remain in place for blocked banks and for any business entities that are more than 50% owned by persons on OFAC specially designated nationals and blocked persons list. During her first official visit to Washington, 
DC in September 2016, Myanmar State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi met with US President Barack Obama, who announced that long-standing trade sanctions against Myanmar are to be lifted, adding, it is the right thing to do to ensure the people of Burma see rewards from a new way of doing business, and a new government. The military has the majority stakeholder position in all of the major industrial corporations of the country. In March 2012, a draft foreign investment law emerged, the first in more than two decades. Foreigners will no longer need a local partner to start a business in the country, and will be able to legally lease but not own property. The draft law also stipulates that Burmese citizens must constitute at least 25% of the firm's skilled workforce, and with subsequent training, up to 50-75%. In 2012, the Asian Development Bank formally began re-engaging with the country, to finance infrastructure and development projects in the country. The United States, Japan and the European Union countries have also begun to reduce or eliminate economic sanctions to allow foreign direct investment which will provide the Burmese government with additional tax revenue. In December 2014, Myanmar signed an agreement to set up its first stock exchange. The Yangon Stock Exchange Joint Venture CO. LTD will be set up with Myanmar Economic Bank sharing 51%, Japan's Daewa Institute of Research LTD 30.25% and Japan Exchange Group 18.75%. The Yangon Stock Exchange officially opened for business on Friday, March 25, 2016. First Myanmar Investment Co. Limited became the first stock to be traded after receiving approval for an opening price of 26,000 chots. According to the World Factbook, Myanmar is one of three countries along with Liberia and the United States that has not adopted the International System of Units Metric System as their official system of weights and measures. The common units of measure are unique to Myanmar but the government web pages generally use both imperial units and metric units. In June 2011, the Burmese government's Ministry of Commerce began discussing proposals to reform the measurement system and adopt the international system of units used by most of its trading partners. In October 2013 it was reported that Dr. Quint San, Deputy Minister for Commerce, had announced that the country was preparing to adopt the international system of units. The provisional results of the 2014 Myanmar census show that the total population is 51,419,420. This figure includes an estimated 1,206,353 persons in parts of northern Rakhine state. Kachin State and Kayan State who were not counted. People who were out of the country at the time of the census are not included in these figures. There are over 600,000 registered migrant workers from Myanmar in Thailand, and millions more work illegally. Burmese migrant workers account for 80% of Thailand's migrant workers. Population density is 76 per square kilometer among the lowest in Southeast Asia. Myanmar's fertility rate as of 2011 is 2.23, which is slightly above replacement level and is low compared to Southeast Asian countries of similar economic standing, such Cambodia and Laos. There has been a significant decline in fertility, from a rate of 4.7 children per woman in 1983 down to 2.4 in 2001, despite the absence of any national population policy. The fertility rate is much lower in urban areas. The relatively rapid decline in fertility is attributed to several factors, 
including extreme delays in marriage, the prevalence of illegal abortions, and the high proportion of single, unmarried women of reproductive age, with 25.9% of women aged 30-34 and 33.1% of men and women aged 25-34 single. These patterns stem from economic dynamics. The economic hardship, which results in the delay of marriage and family building, the average age of marriage in Myanmar is 27.5 for men, 26.4 for women. Myanmar is ethnically diverse. The government recognizes 135 distinct ethnic groups. There are at least 108 different ethno-linguistic groups in Myanmar, consisting mainly of distinct Tibeto-Burman peoples, but with sizable populations of Thai Kade, Hmong Min, and Austroasiatic peoples. The Bamar form an estimated 68% of the population. 10% of the population are Shan. The Kayan make up 7% of the population. The Rakhine people constitute 4% of the population. Overseas Chinese form approximately 3% of the population. Myanmar's ethnic minority groups prefer the term ethnic nationality over ethnic minority as the term minority furthers their sense of insecurity in the face of what is often described as Burmanization the proliferation and domination of the dominant Bamar culture over minority cultures. Monday, who form 2% of the population, are ethno-linguistically related to the Khmer. Overseas Indians are 2%. The remainder are Kachin, Chin, Rohingya, Anglo-Indians, Gurkha, Nepali and other ethnic minorities. Included in this group are the Anglo-Burmese. Once forming a large and influential community, the Anglo-Burmese left the country in steady streams from 1958 onwards, principally to Australia and the UK. It is estimated that 52,000 Anglo-Burmese remain in Myanmar. As of 2009, 110,000 Burmese refugees were living in refugee camps in Thailand. Refugee camps exist along Indian, Bangladeshi and Thai borders while several thousand are in Malaysia. Conservative estimates state that there are over 295,800 minority refugees from Myanmar, with the majority being Rohingya, Karen, and Kareni are principally located along the Thai-Myanmar border. There are nine permanent refugee camps along the Thai-Myanmar border, most of which were established in the mid-1980s. The refugee camps are under the care of the Thai Burma Border Consortium. Since 2006, over 55,000 Burmese refugees have been resettled in the United States. The persecution of Burmese Indians, Burmese Chinese and other ethnic groups after the military coup headed by General Ne Win in 1962 led to the expulsion or emigration of 300,000 people. They migrated to escape racial discrimination and the wholesale nationalization of private enterprise that took place in 1964. The Anglo-Burmese at this time either fled the country or changed their names and blended in with the broader Burmese society. Many Rohingya Muslims have fled Myanmar. Many refugees headed to neighboring Bangladesh including 200,000 in 1978 as a result of the King Dragon operation in Arakan. 250,000 more left in 1991. Myanmar is home to four major language families, Sino-Tibetan, Thai Kade, Austroasiatic, and Indo-European. Sino-Tibetan languages are most widely spoken. They include Burmese, Karen, Kachin, Chin, and Chinese. The primary Thai Kade language is Shan. 
Monday, Pala, and Wa are the major Austroasiatic languages spoken in Myanmar. The two major Indo-European languages are Pali, the liturgical language of Theravada Buddhism, and English. More than a hundred languages are spoken in total. Since many of them are known only within small tribes around the country, they may have been lost after a few generations. Burmese, the mother tongue of the Bamar and official language of Myanmar, is related to Tibetan and Chinese. It is written in a script consisting of circular and semicircular letters, which were adapted from the Munde script, which in turn was developed from a southern Indian script in the 5th century. The earliest known inscriptions in the Burmese script date from the 11th century. It is also used to write Pali, the sacred language of Theravada Buddhism, as well as several ethnic minority languages, including Shan, several Karen dialects, and Kaya, with the addition of specialized characters and diacritics for each language. The Burmese language incorporates widespread usage of honorifics and is age-oriented. Burmese society has traditionally stressed the importance of education. In villages, secular schooling often takes place in monasteries. Secondary and tertiary education take place at government schools. Many religions are practiced in Myanmar. Religious edifices and orders have been in existence for many years. Festivals can be held on a grand scale. The Christian and Muslim populations do, however, face religious persecution and it is hard, if not impossible, for non-Buddhists to join the army or get government jobs, the main route to success in the country. Such persecution and targeting of civilians is particularly notable in eastern Myanmar, where over 3,000 villages have been destroyed in the past 10 years. More than 200,000 Muslims have fled to Bangladesh over the last 20 years to escape persecution. A large majority of the population practices Buddhism, estimates range from 80% to 89%. According to 2014 Myanmar census, 87.9% of the population identifies as Buddhists. Theravada Buddhism is the most widespread. Other religions are practiced largely without obstruction, with the notable exception of some religious minorities such as the Rohingya people, who have continued to have their citizenship status denied and treated as illegal immigrants instead, and Christians in Chin State. According to 2014 census, 6.2% of the population identifies as Christian, 4.3% as Muslim, 0.8% as followers of tribal religions, 0.5% as Hindus, 0.2% as followers of other religions, and 0.1% follow no religion. According to the 2010 estimates of the Pew Research Center, 7% of the population is Christian, 4% is Muslim, 1% follows traditional animistic beliefs, and 2% follow other religions, including Mahayana Buddhism, Hinduism, and East Asian religions. Jehovah's Witnesses have been present since 1914 and have about 80 congregations around the country and a branch office in Yangon publishing in 16 languages. A tiny Jewish community in Rangoon had a synagogue but no resident rabbi to conduct services. Although Hinduism is practiced by 0.5% of the population, it was a major religion in Myanmar's past. Several strains of Hinduism existed alongside both Theravada Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism in the Munde and Paihu period in the first millennium and down to the pagan period when Saivite and Vaishana elements enjoyed greater elite influence than they would later do. Burmese folk religion is practiced by many Bamars alongside Buddhism. 
The general state of health care in Myanmar is poor. The government spends anywhere from 0.5% to 3% of the country's GDP on health care, consistently ranking among the lowest in the world. Although health care is nominally free, in reality, patients have to pay for medicine and treatment, even in public clinics and hospitals. Public hospitals lack many of the basic facilities and equipment. The 2010 maternal mortality rate per 100,000 births for Myanmar is 240. This is compared with 219.3 in 2008 and 662 in 1990. The under 5 mortality rate per 1,000 births is 73 and the neonatal mortality as a percentage of under 5's mortality is 47. Myanmar's government spends the least percentage of its GDP on health care of any country in the world, and international donor organizations give less to Myanmar, per capita, than any other country except India. According to the report named Preventable Fate, published by Doctors Without Borders, 25,000 Burmese AIDS patients died in 2007, deaths that could largely have been prevented by antiretroviral therapy drugs and proper treatment. HIV-AIDS, recognized as a disease of concern by the Burmese Ministry of Health, is most prevalent among sex workers and intravenous drug users. In 2005, the estimated adult HIV prevalence rate in Myanmar was 1.3%, according to UNAIDS, and early indicators of any progress against the HIV epidemic are inconsistent. However, the National AIDS Program Myanmar found that 32% of sex workers and 43% of intravenous drug users in Myanmar have HIV. According to the UNESCO Institute of Statistics, Myanmar's official literacy rate as of 2000 was 90%. Historically, Myanmar has had high literacy rates. To qualify for least developed country status by the UN to receive debt relief, Myanmar lowered its official literacy rate from 79% to 19% in 1987. The educational system of Myanmar is operated by the government agency, the Ministry of Education. The education system is based on the United Kingdom system due to nearly a century of British and Christian presences in Myanmar. Nearly all schools are government operated, but there has been a recent increase in privately funded English language schools. Schooling is compulsory until the end of elementary school, approximately about nine years old, while the compulsory schooling age is 15 or 16 at international level. There are 101 universities, 12 institutes, 9 degree colleges and 24 colleges in Myanmar, a total of 146 higher education institutions. There are 10 technical training schools, 23 nursing training schools, 1 sport academy and 20 midwifery schools. There are 20 47 basic education high schools, 2,605 basic education middle schools, 29,944 basic education primary schools and 5,952 post-primary schools. 1,692 multimedia classrooms exist within this system. There are four international schools acknowledged by WASC and College Board the International School Yangon, Myanmar International School, Yangon International School and International School of Myanmar in Yangon. Myanmar had a murder rate of 15.2 per 100,000 population with a total of 8,044 murders in 2012. Factors influencing Myanmar's high murder rate include communal violence and armed conflict. 
Myanmar is one of the world's most corrupt nations. The 2012 Transparency International Corruption Perceptions Index ranked the country at number 171, out of 176 countries in total. Myanmar is the world's second largest producer of opium after Afghanistan, producing some 25% of the world's opium, and forms part of the Golden Triangle. The opium industry was a monopoly during colonial times and has since been illegally operated by corrupt officials in the Burmese military and rebel fighters, primarily as the basis for heroin manufacture. Myanmar is the largest producer of methamphetamines in the world, with the majority of Yabia found in Thailand produced in Myanmar, particularly in the Golden Triangle and northeastern Shan State, which borders Thailand, Laos and China. Burmese-produced Yabia is typically trafficked to Thailand via Laos, before being transported through the northeastern Thai region of Isan. A diverse range of indigenous cultures exist in Myanmar, the majority culture is primarily Buddhist and Bamar. Bamar culture has been influenced by the cultures of neighboring countries. This is manifested in its language, cuisine, music, dance, and theater. The arts, particularly literature, have historically been influenced by the local form of Theravada Buddhism. Considered the national epic of Myanmar, the Yamazatda, an adaptation of India's Ramayana, has been influenced greatly by Thai, Monday, and Indian versions of the play. Buddhism is practiced along with Nat worship, which involves elaborate rituals to propitiate one from a pantheon of 37 Nats. In a traditional village, the monastery is the center of cultural life. Monks are venerated and supported by the lay people. A novitiation ceremony called Shinbu is the most important coming-of-age events for a boy, during which he enters the monastery for a short time. All male children in Buddhist families are encouraged to be a novice before the age of 20 and to be a monk after the age of 20. Girls have ear-piercing ceremonies at the same time. Burmese culture is most evident in villages where local festivals are held throughout the year, the most important being the Pagoda Festival. Many villages have a guardian gnat, and superstition and taboos are commonplace. British colonial rule introduced Western elements of culture to Myanmar. Myanmar's education system is modeled after that of the United Kingdom. Colonial architectural influences are most evident in major cities such as Yangon. Many ethnic minorities, particularly the Karen in the southeast and the Kachin and Chin who populate the north and northeast, practice Christianity. According to the World Factbook, the Burman population is 68% and the ethnic groups constitute 32%. However, the exiled leaders and organizations claims that ethnic population is 40%, which is implicitly contrasted with CIA report. Burmese cuisine is characterized by extensive use of fish products such as fish sauce, and gapi, and dried prawn. Mohinga is the traditional breakfast dish and is Myanmar's national dish. Seafood is a common ingredient in coastal cities such as Sitwe, Kayokpayu, Malamayang, Mergui, and Daiyai, while meat and poultry are more commonly used in landlocked cities like Mandalay. Freshwater fish and shrimp have been incorporated into inland cooking as a primary source of protein and are used in a variety of ways, fresh, salted whole or filleted, salted, and dried made into a salty paste, or fermented sour and pressed. Burmese cuisine also includes a variety of salads, centered on one major ingredient, ranging from starches like rice, wheat, and rice noodles, 
glass noodles and vermicelli, to potato, ginger, tomato, kaffir lime, long bean, lapat, and ngapi. The Lithue, Bando, Banshe, and Pungai Itang martial arts and Chinlone are traditional sports in Myanmar. Football is played all over the country, even in villages. The 2013 Southeast Asian Games took place in Napiada, Yangon, Mandalay, and Nguisa Beach in December representing the third occasion that the event has been staged in Myanmar. Myanmar previously hosted the Games in 1961 and 1969. Burmese traditional art concepts is popular and respected by the Burmese people and people from abroad. Burmese contemporary art has developed quite rapidly on its own terms. Artists born after the 1980s have had greater chances of art practice outside the country. One of the first to study Western art was Bianian. Together with Nguikiang and a handful of other artists, they were the pioneers of Western painting style. Later on most young children learned the concepts from them. Some well-known contemporary artists are Lun Jiwi, Ong Kai Ahtet, MPP Ye Myant, Myant Sui, Min Wei Ong, Ong Myant, Kin Wang Yin, Po Po, and Zha Zha Ong. Due to Myanmar's political climate, there are not many media companies in relation to the country's population, although a certain number exists. Some are privately owned. All programming must meet with the approval of the censorship board. The Burmese government announced on August 20, 2012 that it will stop censoring media before publication. Following the announcement, newspapers and other outlets no longer required approved by state censors, however, journalists in the country can still face consequences for what they write and say. In April 2013, international media reports were published to relay the enactment of the media liberalization reforms that we announced in August 2012. For the first time in numerous decades, the publication of privately owned newspapers commenced in the country. Internet use is estimated to be relatively low compared to other countries. Myanmar's internet used to be subject to censorship, and authorities viewed emails and posts on internet blogs until 2012 when the government removed media censorship. During the strict censorship days, activity at internet cafes was regulated, and one blogger named Zarganar was sentenced to prison for publishing a video of destruction caused by Cyclone Nargis in 2008. Zarganar was released in October 2011. In regards to communications infrastructure, Myanmar is the last ranked Asian country in the World Economic Forum's Network Readiness Index an indicator for determining the development level of a country's information and communication technologies. With 148 countries reported on, Myanmar ranked number 146 overall in the 2014 NRI ranking. No data is currently available for previous years. Myanmar's first film was a documentary of the funeral of Tun Shine, a leading politician of the 1910s, who campaigned for Burmese independence in London. The first Burmese silent film Maida Ne Thuya in 1920 which proved a major success, despite its poor quality due to a fixed camera position and inadequate film accessories. During the 1920s and 1930s, many Burmese-owned film companies made and produced several films. The first Burmese sound film was produced in 1932 in Bombay. India with the title Nguipay Lo Mayai. After World War II, Burmese cinema continued to address political themes. Many of the films produced in the early Cold War era had a strong propaganda element to them. 
In the era that followed the political events of 1988, the film industry has been increasingly controlled by the government. Film stars who had been involved in the political activities were banned from appearing in films. The government issues strict rules on censorship and largely determines who produces films, as well as who gets Academy Awards. Over the years, the movie industry has also shifted to producing many lower-budget direct-to-video films. Most of the movies produced nowadays are comedies. In 2008, only 12 films worthy of being considered for an Academy Award were made, although at least 800 VCDs were produced. Myanmar is the primary subject of a 2007 graphic novel titled Chroniques Burmans by Kebequa author and animator, Guy Delisle. The graphic novel was translated into English under the title Burma Chronicles in 2008. In 2009, a documentary about Burmese video journalists called Burma VJ was released. This film was nominated for Best Documentary Feature at the 2010 Academy Awards. The Lady had its world premiere on September 12, 2011 at the 36th Toronto International Film Festival. Government General Information Economy Agriculture Trade Environment Coordinates, 22 degrees north 96 degrees east slash 22 degrees north 96 degrees east slash 22, 96